ABC Sport welcomes you to Oran Park for the final of the Rothmans International Motor Racing Series. A race which will decide the champion for this year. Ideal conditions here at Oran Park, hot, overcast skies and a huge crowd on hand to see what should be a tremendous finish for the series of 1979. 57 laps of the large Oran Park circuit, 150 kilometres. Let's cross to sports commentators Will Hagen and Jim Shepherd. Incredible tension building up here at the Oran Park Circuit for this final round of what, in what has been a fascinating series so far and a very hard fought one. You see there the Formula One cars wending their way around as the cars now in grid order start off on what will be three laps altogether. This first parade lap will be followed then by two warm-up laps where drivers will really start to concentrate on warming tyres, engines, brakes, transmissions, getting everything up to operating temperature for what will be the longest race in the series, 57 laps around this circuit and 150 kilometres, and also should be a very hard fought one. That is the 2.61 kilometres of Oran Park, starting on the pit straight there, down to Tirana Corner, round to Rothmans Corner and under the Bridgestone Bridge to Coca-Cola. Rothmans is a point of fairly heavy braking and a bit of braking back at Tirana, then fairly heavy brakes at Coca-Cola, round down to Ampol, where again they have to stop fairly heavily. It's a very slow corner, but they're in a low gear already. Up onto the Bridgestone Bridge, Goodyear, a very tight section through to Sutton's, where the F1 cars should be well favoured, over the shell dog leg, getting uh, cresting up at the shell dog leg, and then going left hand as they try to settle the car down to BP, heavy brakes, and back onto the straight. It's 2.61 kilometres. The lap record stands to Warwick Brown at 65.2, representing 144 kilometres an hour average speed around the circuit. But in practices, just two tenths outside the lap record, the best time, an average speed of just over 143 kilometres around. But the man they're all chasing is the man who had an absolute clean sweep of this series last year. Four wins out of four starts. On to pole position for the first time in this series, Warwick Brown, Lola T332, number 111. And next, next to Warwick Brown on the front row, Larry Perkins, car number 12 in the Elfin MR8, and in a position to take out the series with a win today. Alf Costanzo, the man that absolutely dominated the first two rounds, is leading the series. He's won $24,000 prize money, starts from grid position three. This is car 11, which is the other answer. There are two Ansett Elfin cars in the race, driven by Vern Schubin, and Vern Schubin is in number 11. His teammate number 12 is Larry Perkins. Looking then at six Theodore Racing Team with Highline at David Kennedy. Now, it's his teammate, Jeff Lees, who is further up the grid from him, that stopped out on the circuit. They were only a tenth of a second apart in practices, and he's the third of the three drivers that can win the series. One minute signal, 60 seconds now to the start of 57 laps, 150 kilometres around the Oran Park circuit, and it promises to be a grand race. What a pity, though, that we're missing... Jeff Lees, his teammate, Kennedy, firing the car up, still holding an umbrella in position. He wears a black helmet. He doesn't want to get any heat soak into that helmet as it really pulls in a lot of heat. There are 19 cars about to start. Costanzo has just changed his left-hand front wheel and all is in readiness for what should be a grand race at Oran Park. The final round of this Rothman series for 1979. Who's going to win it? Warwick Brown can't win it, but Larry Perkins can, Alf Costanzo can, and David Kennedy can. And of course, apart from the series, they also want to win this race. There's $10,000 first prize. Ten seconds to go. 
flags up with five to go. 19 cars about to get away. And a brilliant start from Costanzo from the second row of the grid. Look at him firing up towards the front there in 84. He's past Brown and he's past Perkins. Brown into third place. But it's Costanzo Le leaps into the lead from the second row of the grid. Perkins had two chops at it, let the clutch out. He clutched and went again, and it was Costanza absolutely tore through the grid to lead this race from Larry Perkins charging hard on him. And look at the gaggle of traffic soaring away on the first of 57 laps. Costanzo, Perkins, and then Brown, and then Kennedy. Down to Ampol corner, the slowest corner on the circuit. First gear for the Formula One cars. Now into the S's. Behind Kennedy. It's John McCormack, he's in fifth place. Sixth place behind him is Vern Schubert. Seventh is Graham McRae. Eighth is Kevin Bartlett. Ninth, Jim Richards. And obviously Alfie Costanzo has had a change of heart as he sweeps into the finish straight, ready to complete lap one of this 57 lap final round of the 1979 Rothmans International Series with a stream of cars behind him. He's had a change of heart because he said before the race he was determined to sit back in about fourth or fifth position and finish in that spot. A great start and car numbers four and six have been penalised one minute for jumping the start. Chaz Talbot further back in the field and David Kennedy with the potential of winning the series and the race has been penalised one minute for jumping the start. David Kennedy there in car number six, followed by McCormack, by McRae, by Schupin, then by Bartlett and by um, Jim Richards. But Costanzo, what a brilliant start. Alfie Costanzo at some stage of this four race series has led all races bar one. He led in all races except the Surface Paradise round and today he's way out in front and slightly pulling away from Larry Perkins, white car running second, immediately behind him, Warwick Brown in third position. That's news from the clerk of the course that to repeat it, that car four, Chaz Talbot, who's way down the field, but car six, David Kennedy penalised one minute for jumping the start. But what a wonderful run for Alfie Costanzo, the 36-year-old who, by comparison with the likes of David Kennedy, Vern Schubert, even Larry Perkins, is an amateur. And look at the way he's leading away from the field. And... Larry, uh, Vern Schupen in the second of the Ansett team cars in trouble and into the pits, car number 11. But his teammate, Larry Perkins, driving absolutely exuberantly back there in second place, car number 12 being hounded. Stanzo establishes already a quite remarkable lead. Really quite amazing how well Alfie Costanzo is going from Perkins and from Warwick Brown. Perkins in car 12, the Hanson team Elton MR8 running in second position, being hassled along by Warwick Brown and Perkins now hanging the tail out. Brown looking for a chance to get past because he can see the gap between Costanzo and Perkins is starting to open up to see if he doesn't try a passing move down this straight as they complete lap three. And there is very little distance further back to David Kennedy looming up there in the English Formula One car, car number six from Theodore Racing in Hong Kong. Look at them through this fast corner of the circuit. Fifth or fourth gear, depending on the driver's wishes, really, in a 5,000 car. But the English cars go back two gears through there. David Kennedy goes from sixth gear back to fourth to go through that right-hand sweep. Now around this tight back section of the circuit to Ampol. Look at the lead that Costanzo's got. This is quite remarkable, and Brown is not happy in there behind Perkins. But Larry... More sideways than most drivers is even more difficult to pass. It's not an easy circuit to get by on or in the park. There are very few potential overtaking spots. And uh, Larry Perkins, in the way that he flings the car around, tends also to clip the verges and to spit a bit of grit and stones sometime, sometimes onto the track. In fact, John McCormack said earlier, he reckons it'll only be about four laps before Larry Perkins will have spat uh, stones onto the circuit in the area off the Bridgestone Bridge. And this is Alf Costanzo. What a remarkable effort this year by him, by the uh, Stock Brandy team in the Porsche Cars Australia, by Alan Hamilton, really, who, with great wisdom, snapped up Alf, put him into the car, and look what he's doing with the right machinery and the right preparation. Busy as blazes there in the car, 
but doing it superbly. Interesting to note that Alfie Costanzo car 84, the series leader and today's race leader in this final round, has never won a race, certainly of a major nature, at Oran Park. Today, you'd get the impression he's actually born at the circuit. This is a Warwick Brown track, but Warwick Brown is having trouble back in third position, trying to bridge the gap as Alfie Costanzo in the Hamilton Lola T430 is simply pulling out all the stops and pulling away. That's Jim Richards. Jim Richards, who's finished every round so far, has made an error. And uh, bad luck for him. You can see a cable caught up there, which uh, is one of our cameras. So uh, Jim Richards has disconnected one of our cameras around the circuit, but he's had a lose, skated off the circuit. Very bad luck for Jim Richards, who was occupying ninth place. At this stage, Costanzo is driving as much with the rear vision mirrors covering himself as he is looking forward trying to find his way through the race traffic. He is a very busy man with an enormous amount of pressure on him. Brown the Australian the wall international, the Larry Perkins. Brown has just bounced off the concrete wall on the entry to the finish straight, continued on as though nothing had happened, just lost a fraction of ground, and Costanzo, in fact, has pulled away about another two car lengths on Larry Perkins. Costanzo, 84, leading the final round of the Rothman series from Perkins in 12 and Warwick Brown in 1-1-1. Grand stuff, tremendous motor racing from these three top drivers, two Lolas in first and third place. The later model, T430, is in first. In third place, the earlier 332, because Brown destroyed his later car, or the monocoque chassis of it at Sandown. And in between them, the uh, very effective MR8 Elfin, designed and built in South Australia by Gary Cooper. And a car that's uh, being has been very well pedalled throughout the series by Larry Perkins. But as you can see, it's breaking up just a fraction as Perkins apparently not keen on trying to force the situation to get past Costanzo at this stage, apparently has agreed to, uh, to let Alf uh, keep the lead just for the moment because if he gets in front, he knows he's going to get reciprocal pressure from Costanzo. Costanzo disappearing into the distance at the end of the long straight. You'll notice that Warwick Brown in car triple one has dropped back. I think he perhaps could have a tiny handling problem after a brush with the concrete wall. And now you can see the gap. Costanzo perhaps has got the faster signal. He's pulled away from Perkins in 12. Brown now in car 111 behind Perkins. And behind them, David Kennedy slightly closing the gap on Brown. Brown having his last drive today for the VDS team, the Belgian team, uh, for whom he won the series last year and for whom he came second in the Can-Am series last year. But this is the man with a job in front of him. He wants for his international reputation to win this race and to win the series. But that Formula One car is not as well suited to this circuit as many people thought they would be. It takes about 17 gear changes per lap. So Kennedy is changing gears about every four seconds around this circuit. The Formula 5000 cars about half as many gear changes as that. And the other handicap he has is that the 5000 cars with their big five litre motors and enormous torque punch out of the corners, particularly the slow ones, just a little bit more quickly for the earlier, for the first 50 metres or so. Uh, and onto the straights and Kennedy therefore has had a, will have a lot of difficulty in getting them because where he's faster in the tight stuff he can't overtake. Notice that Larry Perkins in car 12 is now again right behind our race leader Alfie Costanzo but further back Warwick Brown was slowed up trying to pass a slower car of Bob Talbot and has now lost about 50 metres. Watch perhaps for another challenge from Larry Perkins in car 12. He's closed up remarkably in the last couple of laps and I think is desperate to try and see daylight ahead of him. Lost Graham McRae into the pits incidentally in car number one. As we watch this dice, Perkins pursuing the stance, so they're on, they've completed 17, they're on their 18. So they're at about one third race distance. And look at the pressure. This hard driving, fiery, young Australian, Larry Perkins, is putting on to Alf Costanzo. Probably the most exuberant driver in the series. A very hard charger, outspoken in his uh, dislike of the handling of these cars. I said, well, why are you in second grid position if you don't like the car? And he said, well, the others must be pretty crooked, but I'm on, I'm on second. He's not very enamored of the handling of them, far preferring the, uh, the pedigree of the Formula One cars and the way they handle and the way they respond the job he's doing nevertheless. 
Perkins still doing a magnificent job in front ahead of Larry Perkins. Poor Warwick Brown, one must have a lot of sympathy for him. He was slowed up initially by Charlie Talbot and just a moment ago by uh, John Wright and he's lost a little bit more ground. Now attempting to make it up as Costanzo swings down through the S's and behind him you can almost read the desperation in his eyes. Larry Perkins desperate and determined to claw his way through to the lead. And 1.7 seconds covering those first three cars. In behind them still David Kennedy in sixes in fourth place. Fifth place still being held by McCormack. And sixth place, good news to followers, and there are many of them, of Colin Bond in car number 14. He's now in sixth position in the Brabham number 14. This is Brown, and this is the race situation after 18 laps, and they have just completed their 19th. So um, there you are. That's the race position as of one minute ago. And there's about a second and a half between the leading three. You can see there in camera just how close they are. And Costanzo or Perkins could win the series. Warwick Brown in third place, having his last drive for his team. And he, after today, becomes an out-of-work racing driver, looking for a drive in the Can-Am, and therefore looking for a good result in this race to uh, help his credentials. breaking into there and then this tight sweeping bend that brings them back up onto the straight taken in third gear in a Formula 5000 car second in the Formula 1 cars with the 3 litre but very high revving engines Brown achieving about 7,800 revs down the straight a speed of about 150 odd miles an hour 150, 155 miles an hour They are cracking up a big lead over David Kennedy in car number six in fourth place and fairly close to him, John McCormack still in car number seven in fifth and Bond then in sixth place in 14. Obviously the highlight of the race is this enormous scrap for the lead, although it's quietened down a little as we'll go back to our fourth and fifth cars. This is the Irishman, David Kennedy in car six. Uh, as you might remember, we told you earlier he was penalized a minute for jumping the start number seven is John McCormack he's running back in fifth position now here's David Kennedy going up towards this slight uphill rise called the dog leg and then a downhill run down in the BP corner David Kennedy car number six in fourth position part of the story of any uh, motor race these days and an enormous part of it is tires and Part of the story with Formula One cars is that these cars must use a harder compound uh, tyre that grips less well, therefore, than they would be able to use in Formula One Grand Prix races. And it's the tyres as used, the G50 compound, in the Aurora series in England. And so that's part of the reason the Formula One cars haven't run away and hidden from the Formula 5000 cars. If we look at John McCormack, he incidentally where a lot of the runners are running good years, John McCormack has chosen to run on Dunlops for this particular race. That's so again. And it really is an outstanding effort by him. Look at the pressure being put on him by Perkins and look how well, how immaculately, other than for one error, Costanzo has resisted that pressure. Nobody since 1964, when this international series started, not always under Rothman's sponsorship, but nobody in that time locally based in terms of driver and team has won the series so Costanzo can pull it off on behalf of the Porsche cars team from Melbourne it will be the first time ever that uh, it's been achieved by a locally based team and driver Warwick Brown's won it before but generally when he's been based overseas and other than for that it's been won by mostly internationals from Europe and from England Perkins is noticeably quicker through this section of the circuit but appears to lack the legs down the straight and Costanzo always open to break through this traffic again. Perkins hanging on. You'll notice Warwick Brown, the red flash at bottom of the screen going through, has dropped back in third position. This is the dice, the dice for the lead. Costanzo in 84, Larry Perkins, South Australian born, done most of his racing in recent years overseas in car number 12, hammering away in the pressures under which Alfie is racing must be absolutely enormous. He can't afford to make a mistake. Perkins has the better run, getting a little bit weavy and 
darting over the track there. Probably a little bit too exuberant and too determined to get that lead. He's got lots of time yet. Warwick Brown has dropped back somewhat. A uh, couple of seconds in arrears to Perkins now. As Perkins is putting a lot of pressure on the stand, so. But Alf doing a tremendous job. And there are many drivers who wouldn't, in their position in the series, wouldn't be keen to be running the race from the front, would be happy to settle for second or for third place because he only has to beat if Perkins could win the race, then Alf only has to come in the first eight to beat him, and the first ten to beat Kennedy should Kennedy win the race. But uh, he's running absolutely from the front and doing a grand job indeed. It's a, a credit to his driving, but a credit also to the car, the way it's set up, and the way he's treated it throughout the series. He's off the circuit! He's off the circuit! And... Uh, after all that praise of Alf Costanzo, he's thrown away first place. Larry Perkins is into first. That was the Bridgestone Bridge where he got into trouble before. So Alf Costanzo, let's have a look at the recap in situation in a moment. But uh, he just drove his way off the circuit. That's Kennedy going by him too. So it is now Perkins from Brown, from Kennedy, from Costanzo. And he would only be just a little way in front of John McCormack. Is the series going to fall apart? For Alf Costanzo, he's heading towards the pits as McCormack is going in behind him as they come down into BP corner. Alf Costanzo, is he headed for the pits in car number 84? Unbelievable bad luck, Costanzo into the pits. Left rear, left rear tyre flat. There it is, a flat tyre for Costanzo. He still can win the series. Let's watch this pit stop. Absolutely critical. As I said, he's got to finish in the first eight to beat Perkins, the first ten to beat Kennedy if Kennedy wins. So at this stage, he's about fifth. Let's just watch it. A new rear tyre needed. What, what bad, rotten luck for Alf Costanzo. Bob Vincent of the pits will keep an eye on that situation, but it appears to be only one tyre. It's back on its wheels. He'll be away in a second. The situation, as Will Hagen explained to you, is that Perkins now is in the lead in the race, but if Alf Costanzo can battle his way up through the field again, he can still take out the series. So despite that bad luck of going off with a flat tyre, what drama and what a finish to this final round of the 79 Rothmans. That was on the 24th lap that Costanzo went off just short of half race distance in the 57 lap race. We'll give you his race position in just a moment at the completion of this lap when he comes up. Oh, he's gone again. What is the problem now? Mechanical problem. It's inconceivable. But Costanzo is in real trouble to pass John Davison Park there and about to make a real car park of the area at Ampol. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Alf has nursed the car, been easy on it all through the series. The engine hasn't been rebuilt. They didn't feel it needed it. And now Alfie Costanzo has failed in his bid to win the Rothman series. Um, Having said that, not necessarily, because if Perkins doesn't win, and if, Ken if Ke Perkins doesn't finish, or if Kennedy doesn't finish, well then Costanzo can still win, because he's in the lead with 28 points. But uh, in the present race situation, he will lose the series. He has 28 points, Perkins has 21, Kennedy has 18, and there's 15 for first place, 14 for second, 13 for third, and so on. So at this stage, he has the potential to lose the series, but he is in the lead on points. And there's Larry Perkins off. It's unbelievable. Larry Perkins in a real driving error, a crazy one. On the slowest corner of the circuit, a second gear corner. A dreadful error there by Larry Perkins. Still in the lead from Warwick Brown in 111, Kennedy in six, McCormack in seven, Colin Bond in 14. And have a look at this again. There he goes, just skates out in the tail. An area that's been newly surfaced and is very bad grip. And here is the race leader, Warwick Brown. He can't win the series, Brown, but he'd love to win this race. He wants the $10,000 and he wants the 
the, uh, the credo that goes with the, um, the victory, because if he can win this, he can go back to America looking for a fresh drive this year with some better credentials than if he, uh, than he's been able to get so far through this series. It's been a fairly dismal, disappointing one for Warwick. Crashed in the first round before even the race started on the warm-up lap. Then in Adelaide, had a gearbox actually sort of blow apart. A bit came out of the outside casing and it got very hot and he withdrew there. At Surface Paradise, he went extremely well and uh, Warwick Brown came in in fourth position. But but they come to the shell dog leg, Kennedy in second place, Perkins just back onto the circuit there. Perkins driving very raggedly indeed, or has he got a problem with the car? Has he got, for instance, a tyre problem or a handling problem? But he's back now to third place. Kennedy is up to second place chasing Brown. What a race and misfortune and of incident. So, Bond 2 is now in front of John McCormack. So Colin Bond in his uh, comeback to single-seater racing after many years absence. It's now up into fourth position. Well, Larry Perkins really doing it wrongly at this stage. He's been off the circuit twice. Could easily have some handling problems. The car has been going around some of these corners in stabs and starts. But through this section, lots of drivers yesterday were complaining about gravel and various bits of grit on the circuit. So it's become extremely twitchy. Perkins back in third position now after momentarily inheriting the lead when Costanzo pulled out. He's in third. Here's our race leader, Warwick Brown. Car 1-1-1 and running well. Top of the straight where he bounced off the wall earlier in the event. David Kennedy uh, is through into second position. Don't forget, though, he's running with a one-minute penalty. And about a 15-second gap back to Kennedy from Brown and probably 15 seconds or so back to third place, Larry Perkins. And here he is, Colin Bond is in car 14, having far and away his best run so far. He is in fourth place and he's falling in, Larry Perkins. He actually has only two points in the series from a ninth place at Adelaide and then a third, and that was after a pit stop, quite a lengthy one, and then he came in 13th at Service Paradise. But that's been no reflection of Colin Bond's driving ability at all. The other thing is that John McCormack's into the pits now in car number seven, whom uh, Bond has just overtaken. So he was in fifth. He's gone to the pits. But Bond doing a great job. That's John McCormack in the Uni Park, Leyland McLaren M23. Bad luck for John. It's a new engine into the car, or a new old engine, after the fire that he had last week, just as they left the starting grid. It melted too much of the fuel injection bits and dropped too much into the engine, so they just did an engine change. And this is an older engine, and at this stage it's giving some trouble to John McCormack. Was in fifth place when he went to the pits. Looking now at the gap between uh, Bond and uh, Perkins, and they are well within a second of each other as we look at Warwick Brown still in the lead. But a grand scrap developing, I think, for third and fourth place. Look at Colin Bond nibbling away at the rear of Larry Perkins. Perkins over the dog leg, chased by Colin Bond, and this is the best dice at the moment. They're running third and fourth. Perkins third, Bond fourth. A long way behind the leader, but it's the best part of the race at this stage. A great dice, and the, the situation is also that Perkins at the, man, at the moment is the man in the box seat to win the series. If he finishes in third place, he'll get 13 points, which would bring him up to 34 in front of Alf Costanzo with 28. They're on their 35th lap of the moment, 36th, they've completed 35. Um, and look at Bond, looking down the inside of Larry Perkins there. If he finishes in fourth place, he's still got enough points to win the series. And that's with the proviso that sufficient cars keep running so that when Kennedy takes his one minute penalty, he's not within three positions of Larry Perkins. So cop that for some mathematics. But that's the situation. Perkins at this stage is potentially the winner of the series to the retirement of Costanzo. But uh, Kennedy is not entirely out of it. And uh, if he keeps the bit between his teeth, well, it's a, an enormous task for him, almost impossible, but not quite. Perkins, though, being kept extremely honest, 
if a little untidy, but Colin Bond there going so well in car number 14. An old and fairly unique BT43 Brabham. The BT number standing for Brabham Toronac. And look at the extra speed he's got on the straight. That's been one of Bond's problems through the series. has been lack of steam in the engine department, or lack of go. He's had steam on occasions. Uh -huh. Because he's had a fair amount of trouble with that car of... of a sort of nature, he's had a number of fuel pump belt drives go, he's had overheating, he's had a wing come adrift in Adelaide, he's had handling problems pretty well all through the series, but Colin Bond all the way through has demonstrated his enormous ability to get out and to race and to go quickly in almost any type of motor car. Pick up race leader, Warwick Brown, car 111, heading now towards the dog leg and the downhill dip into uh, BP corner with a big lead now, very, very big lead. But if, at this stage, and let's hope we're not jinxing him, he seems to be going comfortably. One into the wall is car 15, is Terry Hook. Blue car further back. And uh, in various sections of the circuit, the track is starting to resemble a very small parking lot. There are cars stuck into walls and off the track in all sorts of peculiar positions. Warwick Brown and David Kennedy off the circuit. That's the end of the Formula One challenge. I have no idea what went wrong. David Kennedy, having been in second position with a one-minute penalty, is now off the circuit, which, of course, will bring Perkins up into second position. And Warwick Brown, our race leader. Colin Bond, on that basis, will be in third position. Well, Larry Perkins then only has to finish now with 40 laps completed by him and by Warwick Brown and Colin Bond, only has to finish to take the Rothmans title for 1979. Brown on his winning way at this stage with a margin of about 18 seconds over, well, that was over second place Kennedy and it's considerably more than that. Back now to second place as he laps John McCormack out on the circuit again. Uh, second place Perkins now, third place Bond, and they have completed 41. That's the leader, Warwick Brown. He's coming up now to complete 41. He's on his 42nd, and it's a 57 lap race. Longer than the other races in the series, 150 kilometers. That's the race position. Look at the front of Colin Bond's car. The nose has had a little bit of a touch somewhere. Colin's uh, had a little bit of a misjudgment, I'd say. And in third place at this stage, he's lost a lot of ground to, um, and is heading to the pits, I think. He's lost a lot of ground to Larry Perkins in car number 12. He's looking there and trying to see how bad is it, should he call to the pits. But when you're doing 150 odd miles an hour and you've got a bit of the front of the car flapping about, it's far better to go to the pits for safety, see what the situation is, see if you can rectify it. But the aerodynamics, if he comes out again, the aerodynamics of that car are going to be upset something dreadfully. Bond in third place into the pits at the end of his 41st lap, as Brown has completed now 42. This is really going to throw that car out. What bad luck for him. He had the back end of the car. The aerodynamics go astray in the last series undo the quick fasteners and take it off will be the only solution. Colin Bond, quick conference with his pit crew. Off with the front, is he going out again? Gloves off. Yes, perhaps he fixed up the radiator as well. And it looks as though the problem's a bit greater than just the nose on the car. Throttle, throttle sticking. That's probably the problem. They were fiddling with the throttle linkages there. I would say he's had a throttle linkage problem. He's probably stuck. He's probably run off when he's backed off for a corner. He's, uh, he's stayed on the throttle, raced on ahead and hit something, but he's off again. No downforce now on the nose with the uh, aerodynamics thrown right out. But Colin Bond back out on the circuit. We'll give you his race position in just a moment. But the situation is this, that Warwick Brown in 111 leads from Larry Perkins as well. He's in second place. Third place now will be unbelievably John Wright in car number 76. And John McCormack, despite a pit stop, could well be in fourth place. Brown has completed 44. And so too now, in just a moment, will Larry Perkins complete his 44. That's the situation. A man that's been... Uh, making a couple of errors throughout the race and a few more through the series. 
Larry Perkins in 12. Still in second place though, despite two off circuits in this race so far. And Larry there, always exuberant, always with the tail of the car out. Loves power, loves a, a car that he can really throw around. He's driven Formula One for both the BRM and the Surtees team, but neither of those teams were winning teams. He'd have been taken in to the uh, Martini Brabham team, probably, except that they, the Martini people wanted a more experienced Formula One pilot, and uh, they insisted on John Watson, who at that stage was interesting in switching teams, and they took him into the team. Larry Perkins missed the drive, despite a dry, tryout in the Japanese Grand Prix in 1976. And uh, since then, he's been struggling to get back up into the top echelon of Formula One or Formula Two motor racing, hoping this year for a good competitive drive in European Formula Two. But some real news with us here at this stage is up in the commentary box, we've got David Kennedy absolutely covered in sweat and looking no doubt fairly morose about it all. David, what's the, been the problem? What put you out? Very disappointing, actually. Uh, but as I said before the race, and I feared uh, the gear linkage problem. Uh, you know, I was worried whether the gearbox or the gear linkage or some way in the transmission would give me a trouble. In fact, actually, the gear knob came off in my hand. And as you know, and as you can see, I'm not that big a lad. But <laughs> well, you keep your hand plastered, in fact, because you've got so many gear changes around this circuit. That's right, yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, it's about four changes, actually. Uh, well, sorry, one change every four seconds. We're looking at the moment at John Wright, who's in third place in car 76, two laps in arrears. Uh, David, there's been an enormous dropout race. Has the circuit been slippery, for oh, instance? Oh, absolutely. In fact, down at that uh, Ampol corner, the very tight right-hander, get one foot off the line and you're off the track. It's that bad, in fact, because uh, all the shingle and scale and all the stones and bits of rubber gets thrown out on the outside and uh, you do go one foot wide on that and as you see the cars go into the wall one had to be very very careful there in fact that's the case all the way around the track well Colin Bond we can see is having a little bit of an off circuit out of Sutton's corner but uh, he's back onto the track but there is a, a in fact an enormous number of damaged cars down there at Ampol and as you say you've got to be absolutely precise on your line in that area yeah super careful in fact there's no point in going quickly there in fact up on the bridge as well there's another place as and further on where Larry Perkins spun another one foot off the line and again you've gone we're looking at Colin Bond who's in honest earnest pursuit of John Wright in 76 he's off in pursuit of him Look at him without the uh, the front on the car. What do you think of that, David? How would you oh like God, to be driving we, that? How we can manage that is more than I know. That's one hell of a handful. In fact, what the front wing does and creates a considerable downforce on the car, and that balances off the rear wing. Now, if you lose either front wing or rear wing, the car is just dead. Well, in, to drive. in fact, that has been a, a he he's been suffering heavy understeer in that car through the series anyway. Oh, that'll only maximise it here. He's in real trouble there. In fact, I think he's just playing to finish now at that stage. Doing a great job, Colin Bond, there in car number 14, trying to overtake John right in 76 the man immediately in front of him and they have completed at this stage 50 laps and it's a 57 lap race david a big disappointment to you yeah, no doubt very much so and more so in fact from my sponsors jack kelly who came across from um, england to see this race and teddy yip from hong kong and all the people that were involved in running the show in fact the average spectator really doesn't get a chance to see what goes on behind the scenes and the finance and the organizing of teams and mechanics and one thing it's one hell of a show in fact and then for a few minutes you see it on television you were advised, of course, that you'd been penalised 60 seconds for jumping the start. Yeah, in fact, I found that, uh, well, I won't, can't say obnoxious, really, because it, it, I, with fair dues, I, I felt the flag was up for more than the mandatory five seconds. And the problem with these Formula One cars, you can't have the clutch in too long, otherwise it begins to pull against the engine. And that's what's happened. I couldn't stop the car rolling. And if I, in fact, the only other option I had was cut the engine. Oh, well, rather a minute than rather cut the engine. Looking at Warwick Brown in 111, who's leading it at this stage with 51 completed, and he's on his 52nd. Do you think, David, you could have caught him? You had a big job in front of you. Oh, there was a fair few seconds gap. I reckon the only way I could have caught Warwick at this stage was for him to make a mistake. Um, I was very more concerned, in fact, about Perkins. Uh, very keeping very careful check of my pit signals, uh, hoping against hope that he would have fallen out. All due respects to Larry, a fine pilot on that, but at moments like this, you just drive for yourself and yourself only. What? So this is the race situation at this stage, with Bond now up into third place. Colin Bond has got John Wright, so despite a pit stop, Bond is into third place in car number 14. Car 76, John Wright has fallen back to fourth. So the race situation, there it is. Oh well, Bond back behind him again. So, that's the dice for third and fourth place at this stage, Wright in 76. Oh. And Colin Bond's gone, round he goes, and uh, recovers. 
poor old Colin really must have gross right. understeer problems. God, he must be driving his heart out, in fact, to say with any car, with the condition of his car, knowing full well what it's like to handle it, what it was like before the race. In fact, a tremendous credit to Colin that he held it and got going again with, <laughs> with no abatement in his speed. Here's the situation again. What's the replay? Colin Bond chasing John Wright. Round he goes. Just shows you how quickly one can lose these cars. You know, it wasn't an eighth of a second of that car was back. It was around where the front was. It's right. that critical, in fact. And a uh, driver becomes very attuned, David, to keeping a sense of direction in a spin like that. Absolutely, yeah. In fact, uh, I think we'd make good ballet dancers. <laughs> <laughs> well, your size, you do the right build as well. Um, Warwick Brown, they're doing a great job in 111. Is now complete. Has now completed 53. Is on his 54th lap. The other part of race driving, David, that's interesting. It's a very hot day here today. You're in very cramped uh, conditions in the cockpit. Fitness must be uh, essential. Ab yeah, absolutely, of paramount importance. No question about it. In fact, uh, after halfway through this race, I was really beginning to perspire badly. And now I do about one to two hours training a day, either playing squash or doing isometric exercise. And still, in these cars, it's a phenomenal job. Um, basically, in fact, because the temperatures rise, get so hot, you have a radiator in front of you, the heat pours back into you. It's, it, 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 with this three-piece fire suit that one wears, it's exceptionally difficult, in fact, to remain cool. In fact, I've got a pipe that runs into my overalls and blows me up with air, but I'm damned if it makes any difference. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, Larry Perkins here doing a great job staying in front of Warwick Brown. Brown's not much interested in getting past him. And as we see there, Terry Hook's parked car, we see Perkins still in second place despite two driving errors. Brown in behind him, and as you can see, content to let him go. Yes, uh, I think that's the way he's playing, in fact. Uh, it would be quite a unique situation, in fact, if you found the leader to lap everyone, including the second place man. But I think discretion is the better part of valour here, at least so it appears on a Warwick's, a Warwick's point. And Larry, at the best of times, can get very, very hot behind the wheel, so uh, I think uh, uh, Mr Warwick would be quite brave, in fact, if he went on the inside, so he's holding back. OK, well, thank you, David Kennedy. Very sorry to hear of your misfortune. Bad luck for you and for the Theodore team, who, with uh, well good grid positions for this race, both of you fallen out of it and out of the series. Thank you, David Kennedy. Perkins there in 12. Has now completed... Well, Brown, let's say, has completed 55. He's on his 56th lap, Warwick Brown. It's a 57 lap race, so he's won from the finish. Warwick Brown there has not put a foot wrong, and that's not... John you can Wright say that for very few people in the race. John Wright in car 76 in third position, and a remarkable effort considering this driver in the last season was the TAA Formula Ford champion. And uh, to jump into one of these things, being hustled along here by Colin Bond in 14, is a remarkable effort. A driver with virtually unlimited potential, John Wright, running in this race in third position as we go back to race leader Warwick Brown in no way interested in trying to catch up and pass Larry Perkins at this late stage of the race it would be purely suicidal to contemplate such a thing with so much at stake particularly in the area of prize money and a win which could get him at uh, big drive in the States next season Brown half a lap from victory Brown half a lap from victory as he comes onto the Bridgestone Bridge he's completed 56 has these remaining few corners to go the S's. Third gear corner. Sutton's corner taken in third gear. Sweeps hard through the left hander there. Up this short straight. To the shell dog leg. Up over the top. Down to BP corner. Squeezing, pushing hard on the brake pedal. Second gear. Out of there, onto the straight. Heading for the black and white chequered flag, Warwick Brown. Car 111, the VDS team from Belgium. John Wright over the start-finish line, Colin Bond following him. Several laps in arrears, but Perkins, the next man that we're interested in. Very few cars left remaining on the track. John McCormack is about to back out on the track in car seven. A great effort by Warwick Brown, though. Just look at Brown going around the Naturally enough, elated, but getting a, an enormous hand from all the flag marshals around the circuit. There's Larry Perkins, who will come home in second position behind Warwick Brown. John Wright will be the car finishing third, but Larry Perkins going over the bridge 
uh, a deserved second place winner, but more importantly, Larry Perkins has clinched the 1970 sign Rothmans International Series. And he's going to be the last man to finish the race, actually, because he was just that fraction in front of Warwick Brown, and he will complete the full race distance of 57 laps. John Wright, further back in third place, has completed 54 laps. So too has, has Colin Bond in fourth place. Fifth place, John McCormack completed 53 laps. Further back, Cole Trengrove in 34 had completed 51, and Bob Johns in 32 had completed 50. Yes. So that's Perkins across the start-finish line, second position, and the winner of the Rothman series for 1979. Warwick Brown, more importantly, the winner of $10,000 and a great deal of kudos indeed for a very fine, heady, cool drive under very difficult conditions. John Wright in behind him. Perkins will win the series with 35 points from Costanzo, second in the series on 28. Brown will be third in the series with 22 and Kennedy will be fourth with 18. Is John Wright, car 76, who finished the race in third position. Tremendous effort for a driver in his first season of Formula 5000 racing. But here's our race winner, final round of today's Rothman series, Warwick Brown, the race winner, and the actual overall series winner, Larry Perkins. With John Wright in behind Kennedy on 17 points, he'll be fifth in the series. Colin Bond will finish up sixth in the series with 14 points. Cole Trengrove will be next with 12 and Vern Schupen also on 12 points. Well, that's the scene of elation for Warwick Brown. It really has been a wretched series for him, even as late as yesterday. He had a right rear, uh, left rear suspension upright brake, and he went into a wild spin through Sutton's corner and uh, was lucky not to damage the car. And last night, as they left the circuit very late after six o'clock, the crew were busily uh, checking the car with chemicals, making sure that there were no further hidden cracks in the suspension. But their overnight checking and their enormous list of things to be done in the VDS team pulled off uh, a great win finally for Warwick Brown. And as I think his words at this stage would be, well, at least something at last has gone right for us. It's been a wretched time, as we said, for Warwick Brown, but this win, I think, will make it so much easier for him when he goes back to the United States shortly to clinch a team drive in the very, very rich Can-Am sports car series. Well, Formula 5000s, in fact, clothed in sports car bodies. In fact, the Can-Am cars are in the States. I think this might clinch the deal. So he's a happy man today with a lot of prize money coming his way. But an even happier man, naturally, will be Larry Perkins. And we'll, we haven't really got time to check, but he, I'm sure he'd be one of a handful of drivers who have finished every race in the four race series. Going back to the presentation area. In a moment, Adrian Ryan will. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the presentation. we've just seen the exciting final round of the Rothman series for 1979. And it was won by the man who's probably had most of the bad luck for the season. But it's my pleasure first to introduce to you the New South Wales State Manager for Rothmans of Paul Mall, Mr. Leon Sharp. Thank you, Adrian. May I, on behalf of Rothmans, offer congratulations and sincere thanks to all the drivers who took part in this series. You've done yourselves, not only for yourselves, but for the series and for Australian motor racing, you've done them proud. On behalf of Rothman, sincere thanks to the pit crews, to the car owners, to the car sponsors, to the track officials, and to the promoters of the four rounds. Congratulations to Warwick Brown on winning today's round and to the, Rothman, the 1979 Rothmans International Series champion, Larry Perkins. I would now like to, I would now like to introduce our guest of honour, 
who will present the trophies, the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Neville Rand, QC MP. Uh, Mr Sharp, ladies and gentlemen, I think we'd all agree that this was uh, a very exciting round and when you recollect that last year Warwick Brown won the four rounds of the series and of course that meant winning here. It's a great achievement after not such a wonderful season for him to come up and win this round today. So far as uh, the whole series has been concerned, it's been a very balanced series even today. There were several of great champions with a chance of winning and I think it's very fitting that in the midst of such outstanding company, an Australian, Larry Perkins, has won the trophy. So I should just like to hope that uh, Rothmans will continue their interest in what is perhaps one of the more interesting and exciting series in the racing motor racing calendar and that uh, Oran Park and uh, uh, their sponsors uh, will maintain this track in uh, the great shape that it's in and provide so much entertainment for so many people. Warwick, congratulations, and Larry, to you too. I think Mr Rand should come more often. He brings me luck. I can't do anything wrong when he's around. Maybe I should enter politics. But uh, I'd just like to thank my mechanics who did a magnificent job. We, we had a bit of a setback yesterday and uh, in fact the whole series hasn't gone really that well for us and we've had our problems but they certainly came through today and I've got to thank them very much for, for all the work they've given me over the years. I'd like to thank our uh, sponsors for back us here in Australia, BP, my sponsors Sunaroid and of course Rothmans for, for putting on this series. Thank you very, very much and I hope to see you next year. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the series, the Rothman series for 1979, is Larry Perkins, and we'd ask Premier Rand if he would present the trophy to Larry Perkins. Well, I'd like to thank first Rothmans for putting on the series, it was very good. Uh, all my sponsors, Anzet. Kabuto, BP, and Gerlock. And lastly, not least, my team for doing a, a bit first class job. My car was 100% the whole trip, and I'm, I'm really appreciative. And thanks again. Thanks, Thank you very much. That's the way they finish today. Brown from Perkins. This is round four, the final round of the Rothman series for 1979. Brown from Perkins, from Wright, a grand job by uh, John Wright in his only fourth drive in the car. Colin Bond, you saw him wrestling with difficult conditions. John McCormack, a pit stop, as Bond had also, but nevertheless finished fifth. Cole Trengrove, sixth, and Bob Johns, the only other runner, seventh. So, uh, great effort by all those people in a race that had 19 starters. And the series finished up like this. Larry Perkins with 35 points, the victor. And again, giving victory for the first time to a locally based team, although Larry really himself is based overseas in terms of his driving. Costanzo still held on to second place despite his retirement. Brown pulled up to third. Kennedy fourth, again despite his retirement. Wright, Bond, Schupin, the Australian international, John McCormack and Cole Trengrove. So an absolutely incident-packed series and race. And the... Uh, the jubilant people going round there now.